in the book, how does, how does the show go on, we talk a lot about all the different aspects of the theater. And there's a section in the book at the very end, I talk about the power of teachers, the power that teachers have had on my life and the power that teachers have had on the lives of everyone I work in the theater with. But at the same time, I talk about the fact that all of us who may be teachers are also always students. In the theater, whether it's the practicalities of the theater, the mechanics of the theater, but more importantly, about the life force of the theater, we're always learning. We're learning about each other. When we pick up a text today in a new play, perhaps about a, a, a particular social phenomenon or a moment in history, a moment in time, the theater gives us a chance to study that and learn that. Audiences coming to the theater when Gordon Davidson directed the landmark production, Children of a Lesser God, the great Mark Medoff play. Audiences gathering at that time, this was back in the late 1970s, early 1980s, learned for the first time what deaf culture in America was really about. This one play did more to change the perception of deaf people in America than almost anything else. Think about that. One man writes a play about a woman's struggle with English versus American Sign Language and the discussion of that, all brought to life in a play. And everyone who worked on that play, and frankly, everyone who's worked in the theater since, has learned from that. There is a direct and immediate power of the theater to share something with an audience. Actors are learning, audience is learning, directors are learning. We're all learning, and in a sense, we are simultaneously teachers and learning at the same time. And what better way to lead your entire life than to constantly be able to share something and constantly be able to learn something? And that happens in the walls of a theater.